In the previous video, we talked about the configuration that Istio CNI plugin does on the node and how it sets up the IP tables rules and IP sets. We talked about the interfaces on the node and how they connect to the interfaces on the Z tunnel running on the same node. In this video, we'll explain how the Z tunnel gets configured. We've mentioned the Istio in and Istio out interface and that they are connected to P Istio in and P Istio out interfaces on the Z tunnel pod through the Geneve tunnels. So if we look at the routes on the node first, we run IP route show, and then let's find the Z tunnel that's running on that same node. And then what we can do is we can shell inside that Z tunnel and then we can run the IP route show command again. The configuration on both the node and Z tunnel is shown in this diagram. And we can see that STO out interface on the node has the IP 127.1 and it's connected to the P STO out interface on the Z tunnel with the IP 127.2. And then similarly for the STO in and P STO in interface. Now note that these IP addresses are set by the CNI plugin. We can also look at the IP tables rules on the Z tunnel. We'll notice a couple of ports that are being used. For example, port 15008 is the inbound port using HBone. So all traffic that's entering the node and consequently entering the Z tunnel pod will be routed to this port. The rule is applied for the incoming traffic that arrives on PSTON interface and has a destination port of 15008. The rule is saying to use TProxy target. TProxy allows transparent interception and redirection of the traffic in such a way that the original source IP and port are preserved and that allows the destination to see the original client's IP address and ports regardless of how many hops it goes through. Now the on IP and on port parameters are just specifying to redirect the traffic to the local port 15001 and to use the loopback address. The tProxy mark parameter is specifying the mark to be set on the packet. Note that the mark is used in other rules as well, and this mark is used in the rule list to identify the traffic that needs to be redirected to the Z tunnel. Similarly, we have the rules for the outbound traffic that gets redirected to port 15001 and the port 15006, which is for plain TCP traffic, so traffic that comes outside of the ambient mesh. Now this diagram captures these ports more clearly. Note that there's also port 15053, which is used for DNS traffic. And the rules for that port only get created if we have the SEO meta DNS capture variable set to true. Now that we've seen the rules on the node side and the rules on the Z tunnel side, let's put everything together and talk through how a request sent from a sleep pod on node one to the HTTP bin pod on node two flows through the different components. Now the request from the sleep pod is captured by the rules and IP tables configuration on the node. Because the pod is part of the ambient mesh, its IP address was added to the IP set on the node and all the packets will get marked with the mark 100. The rules on the node specify that any packets marked with 100 are to be directed to the destination 127.2 through the Istio out interface. The rules on the Z tunnel proxy will transparently proxy the packets from P Istio out to the Z tunnel outbound port 15001. The Z tunnel will process the packets and will send them to the destination IP, which is HTTP bin, and that gets captured on the dedicated interface that was created for the HTTP bin IP on node B. The rules for inbound traffic will ensure that the packets get routed to the STO in interface, and then a tunnel between STO in and P STO in makes the packets land on the Z tunnel pod.
The IP tables configuration will capture the packets from the PSTON and based on the marks, it will direct the traffic to port 15008. The proxy will process the packets and finally send them to the destination pod. In the first video, we mentioned how there are two mechanisms to configure the traffic routing. One was the IP tables, and the second one is using the eBPF. Using eBPF, we can extend the kernel's capabilities and run sandbox applications without modifying or recompiling the kernel. This means instead of configuring IP tables, route tables, and tunnels, we could write an eBPF program that does exactly what we want, and then we could attach it to a kernel-defined event. Note that there isn't necessarily anything wrong with IP tables, however, it does add additional complexity and slowness due to the number of links created, there's more complex kernel forwarding rules, and so on. From that standpoint, eBPF is less complex, more performant, and easier to manage. So how does it work? The traffic control subsystem in the kernel has a hook that allows us to attach an eBPF program to it. The hook is called TC, standing for traffic control, and it's used to intercept and modify the packets that are being sent to or from the specific network interface. So instead of configuring firewall rules, we can write eBBF programs that will execute when the packets are being sent to or from a specific network interface. The Istio CNI installs four eBPF programs that hook onto the ingress and egress points of the traffic control subsystem. The app inbound and outbound eBPF programs are attached to the ingress and egress points of the workflow pod on the host side. And then on the Z tunnel side, the programs are attached on the ingress traffic control on the host side and on the pod side. As shown on the image, the eBPF programs basically do the same thing as the IP tables rules, but they do it in a more efficient way, which is easier to read and manage. The last thing we'll talk about is the waypoint proxies. So far, we've only talked about Z tunnels that handle L4 traffic. However, Istio also supports L7 traffic, and in order to handle any L7 concerns, we need to deploy a waypoint proxy. Now, before we deploy a waypoint proxy, let's look at the new proxy config workload command. Using this command, we can check the proxy configuration of a Z tunnel. Now, the command will list all the pods in the cluster, and it tells us two things. First, it tells us whether the pods are part of the ambient mesh or not. We can see that in the protocol column, and any pods using the HBone protocol those are part of the ambient mesh. Second, it tells us whether the pod is using a waypoint proxy or not. We can see that in the L7 support column. Note that none of the pods have waypoint proxies deployed, so the values in that comma, column are set to false. If we wanted even more information, we can use the JSON output format. Now note that in addition to the workload configuration, there's also the authorization policy configuration that will show up if there are any L4 authorization uh, policies defined. So let's see how to deploy a waypoint proxy. Now the waypoint proxy is an instance of an Envoy proxy, and in order to deploy it, we'll have to install the Gateway API CRDs first. So let's do that. And now that we have the gateway API CRDs, we can take a look at the waypoint command. Note that the waypoint proxies are deployed per service account, and they can live and run on any node regardless of where the actual workload is running. They don't have to be co-located with the workloads. So let's generate a YAML first so we can see how it looks like. Uh, and I'll use the HTTP bin service account as an example. The configuration uses the gateway class name of Istio Waypoint, and it specifies a listener called Mesh that listens on port 15008. Now, to deploy the Waypoint proxy, we can use the apply command. Now, let's look at the pod when it starts up. And now, if we look at the configuration of the Z tunnel again, we'll see the L7 support column is set to true, 
And then if we look at the JSON configuration, we'll notice that the waypoint address, the IP, will actually be included in the waypoint addresses field for the HTTP bin workload. Now, as for the waypoint proxy and how it gets configured, uh, it tries to exactly match the IP and the port of the destination workload, then it enforces any L7 authentication rules and finally forwards the request to the destination. Now, one important thing to note with the waypoint proxies is that they're only part of the request flow on the server side and not on the client side. So they are strictly reverse proxies for the L7 traffic. For example, if we have two workloads, both with waypoint proxies deployed, and we make a request from uh, workload A to workload B, the request will skip the client side waypoint proxy, the proxy on workload A side, and then it's going to end up on the server side waypoint proxy and then finally land on the workload B. In these series of videos, we went into a lot of details and looked into different components such as STO CNI and how they work together with the platform and how the configuration is set up. Note that at this time, Ambient is part of Istio's main branch and will be available as part of the regular releases, starting with version 1.18. However, Ambient is still in the experimental phase and it's not recommended for production use. If you enjoyed these videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.